elements. One would be that, uh, um, that you know, it, it wouldn't have to replace Debian's or RPMs. At first, it could just, you know, it could just be, you could install it right, well, I thought into your distro, and then you would have access to all the repositories that the Universal Installer has, as long as you, you know, you could even install the interpreter as a .dev file, then you would have access to all the common install files. You don't have to replace it, it could just be something you added, which of course does cause problems with, you know, you would have to, you might have conflicting stuff, but at first, you know, it doesn't have to replace anything. It could just be something extra. Um, but I do have a question, that when you have distros based on Ubuntu or Debian, they got a lot of, there's a lot of good stuff from that because all the people working on Debian or Ubuntu, all the good stuff from that helps all these distros become, you know, popular, you know. Right. Uh, so I'm thinking if there was this universal store that anyone, if they spent enough time, could make an interpreter to for their distros, there would be a lot of more people going around just making a distro based off any, based off nothing, and that would be even worse than a bunch of people making a bunch of base distros. Well, yeah, that, that, that would be worse and better in some cases in that... Um, at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, if I if I if I want to, I can sit down and make a Linux system from scratch. As a matter of fact, that's a Linux project, Linux from scratch, um, which is the thing. But at the end of the day, before you go into the work necessary to do that, the first question you should sit down and ask yourself is, is this a problem that another distro is needed to solve? You know, am I just trying to make a different UI or look or so on and so forth? Or am I actually trying to make a whole different user experience thing? It, it, um, it, it's like, I'll give you an example of a forking distro that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing. And that would be completely changing the UI so that the desktop environment, like taking a GNOME distro and making it use a SIS or KDE desktop environment or whatever and, and taking the time to go back and tweak all the things so that that is a seamless user experience not just slapping one desktop on top of the thing. That's something best accomplished by a fork distro or, or a, a secondary distro. Anything short of that level of change you don't need another distro and yeah people can all go nuts and sun but Usually those type of distros are fly-by-night distros that come and go, like the Hannah Montana distro. It's like, people are like, you know, there's this great theme I can download that does the exact same thing. I don't need to go to this other distro that isn't updating as often and, and doing other stuff. And if they wind up being, like you're talking about, just fork distros, where they're just basically copy and rebranded to Sunt, then you're going to have a new family of distros show up in Linux. Like we have server level distros, power user command line distros, and then end user user friendly distros. There'll be a new type of distro which is as based on distro, which will be, this is the distro that all of these are based on, and there'll be a handful of those, and there'll be, and it comes in these bajillion fucking flavors. So really that is one distro. They'll just be called different distros, but it's as based on distro. <laughs> Are any necessary disagreements there? It might get confusing to the end user, but <laughs> it, it, as far as for the actual number of distros, I wouldn't see it going out of control. Jordan, do you have anything to say? Jordan, we can't hear you. <laughs> we have to wait a minute. Now? <laughs> okay, I can hear you now. <laughs> Whatever you just okay, did, now. don't undo it. <laughs> Hello? Now my video is gone. Now your video is gone. What well, froze? <laughs> we stop it. Restart it. <laughs> what now? Uh, can you hear, can you see him now? Good. That's <laughs> like. I can see myself. Can you hear like me? I can see and hear you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I might just have to start using my laptop to do this. Sorry. Uh, no, the, the uh, Ubuntu-based system, is the, the problem that I see with it is so many people don't realize that the system they're using is based on something else. If they made it more obvious, maybe. 
but I don't know how many people I've had come to me saying, uh, you should check out Pingui OS, P-I-N-G-U-Y OS. Uh, and I looked at it, and it's Ubuntu with a uh, elementary theme and elementary Nautilus and a couple of other packages on top of it. Uh, same thing with Zorin OS and a dozen others where the people are using it and loving it, but it's just Ubuntu plus some extra stuff, and they well, don't no, realize it, that. It, 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 well, see, and that goes back to, um, it, like you say, people don't realize it, and people don't realize that because of Ubuntu's purest philosophy. Because Ubuntu doesn't do any of that stuff out of the box, so it's left to the end user who installed Ubuntu to do those tweaks. And all these spin-off distros that aren't really spin-off, Mint's a true spin-off distro. They have done some work that Ubuntu didn't do. But distros like your time. They, they have their own repositories. They have their own standalone applications. Yeah. Mint has made their own place in the world at this point. Yeah, it's like it, they started as a spin-off, but then they they started as just a, a base distro. Yeah, but the they, first two versions of Mint, it really was basically a green Ubuntu, but they really had grown out of that. Yeah, it's like, but it they kept, they, they kept doing work. Things. Right, and and that's the thing, but the but like you say, it's uh, the fact that there's so many Ubuntu-based distros that do nothing but you know add a few packs that Ubuntu's purest philosophy refuses to allow in the default Ubuntu build and ISO, I, either because they don't want them or some, or because they violate something else or so on and so forth. You know, goes to say with, you know, Ubuntu is like this close. If they would just lax on that purist philosophy a little bit. And, and honestly, uh, Mint is an example of, you know, how if you just kind of chuck that a little bit and still base on this and go, you can do some really nice stuff. And like you say, people, I, I can't count the number of people who tell me they hate Ubuntu and then tell me they like an Ubuntu-based distro. Because it's like, it's like, it's, welcome to Ubuntu. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's, an, it's one of those things, like, yeah, it makes sense to geeks, but from the end user perspective, Ubuntu just didn't do any of this stuff, because it violates their purest philosophy, and to them that is a different thing. So You know, this, uh, this really doesn't have much to do with what we're talking about, but it does have to do with Mint. Um, I was reading on the Mint forum, somebody commented that they would like to see, you know, if they're donating to Mint, they would like to see what their money goes to, and the yeah. consensus of most Mint users in the forums, just the average user just says that there's no reason that that should have to be done and it's, you know, a person even said that that's really none of your business. So well, okay, here, here's the thing. Uh, distros, and, and Jordan, I'm sure you have someone to say on this too, distros largely survive on donations. They, some of them have more sound business models, but most of them largely survive on donations. And, and here's the thing. Um, there's a certain amount of trust that goes with giving a distro a donation, and I understand what that person's talking about. I would love to see transparency in the financing with distros, uh, and just because it's like when you give PBS money for Pledge Week. You know, they're showing a show you like to raise money out of you that they won't show again till next year's pledge week. It's like, why did I give you money if you're not going to show the show I gave you money for? It's like, it's the thing like that. Um, and a little bit of transparency as to what that's going on is like, okay, you spent my money on things that I, I find important or that are going to be important to things I find important, so I want to give you more money now because I understand I'm helping myself and it's not... It's a two-edged sword, because if you get too transparent, um, you know, the one-upsmanship stuff begins and everything else, and everybody is an armchair quarterback. They think they know better. They think, oh, well, it's stupid to do uh, on this thing that's absolutely core and critical to the functionality of the OS, but it's a behind-the-scenes thing nobody plays with, but it's core to everything else working. So it, it's, it honestly depends on the education of your user base or the user base that's giving the donations and a couple other things. Uh, uh, any real differences on that, Jordan? Or? I, I, can, I can see the point of having the transparency, but realistically, it's probably not going to happen. Because wh where did your $2 go? I, they don't know. Well, no, no, no. You, th that level of transparency is impossible. But just how the how how the whole 
how, how the whole, not even necessarily how much, but like, we're currently doing development in this, we're currently doing development in that. That's, it, it, you know, the general direction, what the money's being spent on um, type of stuff. That, that's the thing. I think for the majority of distros that are actually receiving donations, uh, the majority of the funds coming in are going to bandwidth, are going to developers' pockets, and... Uh, Those are the two big expenses, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's pizza. The, 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 well, yeah, pizza, the development team uh, keeping a roof over their head so they have a place to code. Um, yeah. It's like... A, it's, We're not. Uh, a lot of them are just entirely online. Uh, well, yeah, um, uh, indirectly, but you know what I mean. I, I, I'm not yeah. saying they all get together in one physical location, but I mean, like, so a lot of the core developers on, even on an open source project, even on a Linux source desktop, are, are paid positions. Uh, and, you know, they're using that money to pay the bills, keep the electricity on for their computers, you know, other, other things like that. <laughs> That's, uh, now, now, one place I would like to see transparency, not necessarily in a distro like Mint that doesn't really have a corporation behind it, but if uh, Ubuntu, if they were actually taking donations, if uh, Fedora was taking donations, something where they've actually got a large corporation behind it, funding it. So, no, well, no, th that's the thing where this gets sketchy, uh, because when uh, there, there's two concerns when you donate to a distro. A, it might decide to disappear tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, in which case your money didn't go to produce anything. The other concern is that you're, you're paying somebody's Ponzi scheme where they're going to spend all your money to build this distro up to something that they can then get a big corporation behind them and cash out to this corporation that will drive it into the ground. Uh, and, 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 and that's what when people, when some people are just being trolls, but a lot of people when they're asking for a level of transparency it, it's more to know they're not funding that type of stuff. That they're truly funding open source development. They're they're truly funding the distro. That, that they're not ultimately helping to make somebody else get rich off of abusing open source. Yeah. Uh, and what do you think about the argument that the person donating might not know? Like, say they would have the option to donate to a specific part of the distro. What do you think about the argument that the person donating might not know what really is the best for the digital, what really they need. Like, so honest, like, honestly, I think the decisions about that should be left to the distro. Uh, and if you don't like the distro, go to another distro. Um, uh, or just don't donate to it. Or just don't donate to it. Uh, because I find, honestly, the better user-friendly distros, that's why they do betas. You know, they want their user base feedback. They may think this is the best thing since sliced bread, but they want to know, well, should we have done it this way? Should we have this? They actually care about their user base. They care about the people who are using the operating system that they're making it for. Uh, at least the better ones do. Uh, but at the end of the day, you can't please everyone, and somebody has to go, okay, there are Y bytes on the disk, and one of these packs has to be cut. <laughs> And somebody has to make that judgment call. Uh, now, it doesn't get cut from the repo. Uh, and, and honestly, which those packs wind up being, wind up being which ones are the users using? You know, w what are people doing? Uh, it, it's, uh, there was a reason that PC Lin in 2010 decided to cut OpenOffice in favor of having to get OpenOff and add all the other functionality and stuff they did into it because it made more sense for the user base. There were a lot of people who were using OpenOffice. In fact, I bet almost everyone who uses PCLint uses OpenOffice. But that pack with the one-click get OpenOffice installer made a lot more sense to cut OpenOffice off and leave that in and make the space that made than to leave that in to keep everybody happy. <laughs> uh, and just things like that. Uh, that's also why there's the mini-me distro for stripped-down systems who really need <laughs> mini-me stuff. But anyways... So, anything else to say on this, or are we going to move on to one of the other topics? <laughs> I think we'll move on. Okay. 